The Universal Camouflage Pattern, UCP for short, perhaps one of the most peculiar takes on camouflage instituted by the US Army in the early 2000s. The name says it all, it was an attempt to design a camouflage that would conceal wearers in just about every environment and terrain. However, it pretty much did the exact opposite. Problems arose as the design stuck out like a sore thumb in many areas. The testing done before its adoption stated that its colors were often seen in most areas, however only under certain conditions. Overlooking this, it was incorporated into the digital design, but only really worked semi-well in certain areas, such as in quarries and more rocky terrain, and on occasion when it got dirty or muddy, giving it a darker, more earthy tone. Attempts to adjust and salvage it were made, such as the short-lived UCP Delta, which was tested in Afghanistan for a brief period, but ultimately it proved ineffective and so in September of 2019, the pattern was retired being replaced by Scorpion W2, now known by its official name of OCP or Operational Camouflage Pattern, a variant of the highly successful Multicam. Now, this was a brief overview of the pattern, but if you want to learn more, check out the History Of video on it, as it was one of the first videos done on this channel. Anyway though, looking at all of this, many probably asked themselves, what could this camouflage be good for? Well, a few other countries around the world have since adopted it for different reasons, and in this video we'll be taking a look at them and talk briefly about why they did so. Each of these instances appear to be used by a single section of a larger armed force or a smaller, more specific unit, and leans either into it being used as an urban design or one that can be arguably seen as a way to identify forces rather than to conceal them, which already deviates greatly from the US Army's usage of it. That being said though, our first look is actually a repurposing of the Army combat uniform within the United States by way of correctional facilities. Because the United States is just that, a union of states, each of the 50 plus the six territories has different laws, policies, standards, and so on. This also includes non-federal prisons and the uniforms worn by correctional officers and associated law enforcement personnel. Most often camouflage uniforms will be worn by specialty forces such as emergency response teams whose job is to react in the event of prison riots and other large-scale disturbances or problems. Depending on the county, state, or region, uniforms will often be different from one another, with a wide range of camouflage being used, be it commercially made or military surplus. One such piece of surplus used for a correctional facility is this right here, which is just a standard UCP ACU that was dyed to darken the color along with the addition of correction stenciled on the back in black. This alteration gives it a much more darkish blue-gray appearance throughout, and in a way brings a lot of the varying shapes and their colors closer to one another hue-wise. Due to the only addition being the stenciling, it's hard to determine the history and usage of this specific piece. However, one such example of UCP being utilized was through the Steubens County Correctional Emergency Response Team out of New York State. What's funny is that Unicor, a government corporation by way of awarded contracts, has been making military uniforms and other components for years, so it's entirely possible something made in a prison for a soldier may well end up back in the same one for guards or officers. Additionally, while on the subject of dyed uniforms, it's also worth noting that in 2018 the Subcommittee on Readiness of the House Armed Services Committee expressed interest in over gear and equipment such as pouches, packs, and things of that nature in the UCP design to repurpose the then 1 million pieces of unused stock as a part of the draft for the 2019 National Defense Authorization Act. The goal was to get it to a point where it was similar to that of the operational camouflage pattern, which then was in the process of being standardized. Considering the amount of time that's passed with not much of an update, it's a good assumption that either the research into doing so is still ongoing or the endeavor didn't go far. Chances are good if the dying didn't end up happening, this excess stock was simply sold or donated to another nation, as well as auctioned off through wholesalers to resellers and the general public. But let's now shift gears and move across the Atlantic into southeastern Europe, specifically Bulgaria. In the second half of the 2010s, the armed forces began replacing the older DPM style patterns. These DPM variants were first introduced around 2003 as a part of a reform initiative to remove many of the Soviet style uniforms and equipment for newer ones to meet NATO standards as the country had been invited to join in 2000 and formally did so in 2004. Fully adopted in 2004, they were used by the land and air forces with the urban color set mainly being used by the latter. However, these new uniforms had a plethora of issues surrounding them ranging from shortages of all kinds, when and where they were to be worn, and overall durability. So in 2015, it was announced that once again Bulgaria's uniforms would be updated seeing brand new camouflage patterns. This came in the form of digital ones, specifically ones modeled off of German Flechtarn, with the first version, the Woodland, appearing during the 2017 Armed Forces Day Parade, 
and the third being the UCP clone appearing in the same parade one year later. Eventually being standardized in 2018, these patterns would eventually be dubbed the M18 pattern, though often it appears to be just referred to as Digital Urban Pixel or something along those lines. Now the three variants, being the Woodland, Desert, and Urban, essentially replaced their predecessors and were more or less worn by the same forces, with the first two being for land forces and the third for air. The logic with the Air Force wearing the Urban uniform seems to be that most personnel would be stationed on Air Force facilities such as bases, landing strips, and locations with in more urban areas. So here is an actual set. Whereas the temperate and arid versions were based on Germany's two Flechtarn variants, they did have a level of originality to them. This wasn't the case for the urban, as the pattern, when looked at from a general perspective, is very reminiscent of UCP, though does have some slight differences. Mainly that the shapes and their sizing are not quite the same, however their layering is, that being light gray being on top of dark gray and the tan colors. Additionally, the cut of these new uniforms also appear to take influence from the ACUs, seeing many similar features, though modified a little bit. So why adopt UCP rather than create an urban design in line with the other two digital variants? Well, it's hard to say, but likely came down to ease of creation and cost savings as the arid and temperate flectarn patterns appear to have just been digitized. Based on the design being very similar but not 100% copied, this was likely done with US UCP ACUs, with the shapes being altered and shrunk slightly, making it technically a new pattern, but due to the distinctiveness of UCP, obviously comparisons are bountiful. Overall though, it does appear to be a bit more effective in that under certain lighting conditions such as low light and shadow, it appears almost bluer and more subdued, while in brighter and sunnier instances, it's more vibrant. Moving now into the Middle East is a much lesser seen pattern out of Yemen, which too was worn by members of the country's air force, but it seems for only a small period of time and only by a select few. To briefly set everything up, things began during the Yemeni revolution, which was spurred on by the Arab Spring. As a result of this, then President Ali Abdullah Saleh was forced to transfer power over to Vice President Abdraba Mansour Hadi. However, that transition caused quite a bit more problems such as an economic decline, food shortages, and an eventual separatist movement beginning in the south of the country. Since then, Yemen has been at war with itself, with forces supporting the current administration and President Hadi fighting against a Shia rebel group known as the Houthis that aligned itself with hardline supporters of ousted President Saleh. With Houthis taking control of the capital Sana'a, the Hadi government has been operating in Saudi Arabia and the eastern part of the nation. This brought Saudi Arabia in, as well as a number of other regional nations and groups, and even a few international ones. Because of this, quite a number of camouflage patterns have been popping up, some that have been used within the country for quite some time, while others are newer and widely used, or just seen on occasion. This UCP pattern definitely falls into the latter. Though it's hard to place an exact time as to when these uniforms began being worn and to what extent they were, some social media posts of it in use date it back to late 2014, and usually see higher ranking Air Force officials wearing the pattern, most notably Major General Ibrahim al-Shami, commander of the Houthis aligned Air Force who was killed in early 2019. But let's actually take a look at the pattern and the uniform it's printed on. Regarding the pattern, it's a very interesting variation of UCP, being a bit darker throughout, but keeping roughly the same scale as the original, it took the dominantly horizontally oriented design and turned it vertical, giving it a much more stretched out appearance overall, while also making it look similar to the US Navy's AOR 2 and 3. Aside from the orientation changing, the shapes too are layered the same way as UCP, that being once again light gray over dark gray and tan. The cut is also reminiscent of the first generation of ACU, seeing just about all the same features you'd expect, with the addition of shoulder tabs on the top, larger button belt loops, and no elastic adjusters for the thigh pockets on the trousers. Additionally, the fabric is a synthetic ripstop style intended to be quick drying, no doubt to help deal with hotter temperatures seen throughout the country. Finally, inside both pieces included the manufacturer tag, which when acquired had whiteout applied to the bottom of it, which was used in an attempt to conceal lettering in both Arabic and English, with the English saying specially making Yemen Air Force. It likely was a bad translation meant to say specially made for Yemeni Air Force, or something along those lines. As far as their manufacture, they were made in China, like many other uniforms worn by Yemeni forces. The reasoning behind why the Air Force used it can be surmised from everything that was gathered. It likely was a mix of a few factors, with the largest appearing to relate to how uniforms and camouflage patterns are selected and worn. Considering Yemen has 21 governorates, each of which appearing to have their own military commanders and likely command structure, coupled with the war splintering the military even further, and you have yourself dozens of camouflage patterns on all sides. Some appear more standard and widespread, such as a clone of the US Marine Corps Desert Marpat, for example, with others being more obscure or much smaller in number, 
worn by a select few, which appears to be the case with this vertical UCP, as it was likely chosen as a sort of specialty pattern tailored for more formal and ceremonial events to be worn primarily by certain high-ranking officers. As to why that exact pattern was selected rather than any other arbitrary design, it likely worked as an urban Air Force One good for air bases. This can be backed up to an extent by the fact that it seems to have been replaced with a non-digital camouflage with similar colors, but also a UCP design that's much more faithful to the original US version, both of which have been observed being worn by officers for the same purposes. Moving a bit northeast out of the Arabian Peninsula, we find ourselves in our final country, Iran, looking at a semi-official pattern based off of UCP. It comes in the form of a sporadic usage throughout one of the branches of the IRGC, or Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Founded during the Iranian Revolution in 1979, the IRGC is one of the three branches of Iran's armed forces, the other two being the Law Enforcement Command and the Army, which is the name for the general military of the country, with all three having their own separate sub-branches within them. What's interesting about the IRGC is that in a way it is a second military as it has five branches, those being ground forces, aerospace forces, a navy, the Quds Force, which is used for intelligence gathering and unconventional warfare, and the Basij, a paramilitary volunteer branch. The main difference between these two? The army defends the country and the people, while the IRGC protects the ideas and elements relating to the Islamic Republic and Khomeiniism, that being the actual government system and the ideology relating to it. This comes in the form of preventing foreign intrusions, keeping the regular army in line, and generally preventing any sort of dissent, ideals, or movements that may go against or threaten the Islamic Republic. Of these branches, perhaps the most curious is the Organization for Mobilization of the Oppressed, more commonly known as the Basij, for short, which means mobilization in Persian. Founded in 1980 by Khomeini, it was used as a way to recruit volunteers to fight in the war against Iraq, and was quickly incorporated into the IRGC, where it has been ever since. Today it's used as a sort of internal security and protection militia. Due to it still being made up of volunteers throughout the country, often in separate detachments based in various cities and regions, uniform standards are all over the place, with little as far as policy goes on a national level. Local units will aim to try and keep their uniforms similar to one another, be it cut, color, or camouflage. Members will often pay for their own uniforms to be made, and as such, quality too can range from very good to very shoddy. So with all that said, let's take a look at one such uniform. This particular set's top and bottoms technically see two variants of their copy pattern, which was likely unintentional. Most noticeable on the shirt, it sees the dark gray color closer to a lightish blue green whilst oriented vertically. Flipping it around, the pattern is oriented horizontally and is much more subdued. Looking beyond that though, and comparing it directly to UCP, the shapes aren't designed the same, though their general size is, along with their layering atop one another. Finally, like the original USACU, this set has slanted pockets, a Mandarin-style collar, and shoulder pockets. Overall though, between the pattern's mismatched coloring and alignment, coupled with the poor build quality, this piece perfectly shows how some Basij uniforms are acquired locally either through marketplaces or even sometimes by family members who source all the material and sew it together themselves. Themselves. So you may be wondering why would Iran, specifically the IRGC, use a camouflage that is a copy of a US design on a uniform that is more or less inspired by a US cut? Well, it's hard to say with 100% certainty, but it likely comes down to the viewpoint Iran has on utilizing foreign, specifically Western materials, that being reusing, copying, or reverse engineering them. Looking at it from an Iran-United States angle, so long as this usage doesn't benefit the US, there's no problem, as doing so can assist and sometimes advance their operations. Take a look at the 2011 capture of a US Lockheed RQ-170 drone, which resulted in two different designs being created within Iran over the following few years. When it comes to US uniforms and camo, there have even been instances of captured garments being worn, due not only to this, but also to take advantage of overall build quality and as a way to show off one's stature, with the pattern sometimes being copied and incorporated into native uniform cuts, often being seen worn by higher ranking officials. This in turn is noticed by enlisted and lower ranking troops, and in reference to the Basij, some will try to emulate the look. However, it is worth noting at the same time, you'll often see the pattern, be it on locally produced or US made uniforms, mixed in a sea of other designs. Again, the reasoning can range from a lack of uniform standards to picking whatever was available at the time. Now, as just mentioned, other units have been seen wearing UCP, be they actually US produced, 
direct copies, or ones with a bit of a twist. But we'll talk more about those in a future video, along with a few other countries too, as there are still some others out there. But here is a final look at all these variations next to one another, so you can get an idea about their similarities and differences. It seems that for the most part, UCP has gained a new name as it failed as a universal camouflage pattern. However, it seems to be getting a bit of an extended life as an urban camouflage pattern. Additionally, it also seems that the design has gained a level of prestige, as it's also appeared to be used by higher-ups, which in turn has led to some trying to reproduce the look. A very special thanks to Zorax from Gondolager who assisted with information related to Oran and the Basij uniform. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe if the mood strikes you. If not, it's all good. Just be sure to check back real soon for more videos right here on Uniform History.